It's pretty rare that a character with such little screen time and dialogue can appeal to all, and make a big difference in some way, shape, or form. Princess Luna couldn't be any more remotely definitive here, as she only had one line and a few shots in one episode. Ever since we first saw her and how adorably apologetic she was, every pony's been wanting to know when we get to know this character more. She was a mysterious and yet overwhelming pony to all of us that easily drew our interest from the start. Many online artists have assembled their own enormous stack of fan art of her on DA, as well as many fan fictions and webcomics to only presuming how she would turn out. When an episode of Princess Luna was finally announced, every pony was happily dancing for the anticipation and excitement of her arrival. The wait has finally ended, and we now get to see her true self in this episode, Luna Eclipsed. So Twilight Sparkle and Spiker dressed up in costumes set for Ponyville's yearly festival known as Nightmare Night, which easily represents their Halloween holiday celebration in their universe. Princess Luna makes her arrival but has a hard time in socializing and fitting in with the other ponies due to her unintentionally aggressive first appearances, let's never forget to mention the past. She doesn't understand the current culture or the ways of communicating, so Twilight insists on helping her by learning and understanding fun and friendship. Unfortunately, Pinkie Pie, dressed as a chicken, don't ask, she's just being Pinkie Pie, and a few of the others carry their own gossip up their sleeves, which doesn't help Luna's interactive problems at all at first, until it's all come to realize that scares are meant to be fun. Which also touches upon the purpose of Halloween, or the holiday at least. Immediately getting straight to the character herself, many of us were expecting Luna to come off as a quieter and more resentful personality like Fluttershy, only filled with regrets given all the trouble she's caused in the past. Needless to say, it was quite surprising at the true results in this episode. But even though my expectations as well as most bronies were widely different, the portrayal of Princess Luna here was as great as it could get. She was much more flamboyant and troublesome in a way. She carries the right attitude, similarly to Nightmare Moon, but still has that motivation in wanting to gain the respect of Ponyville, as we can imagine to some degree. I also found it hilarious and clever as to how she communicates, using that Shakespearean accent while using that traditional royal voice where she screams at the top of her lungs to her faithful subjects. Not only was this hilarious, but it makes a legitimate amount of sense considering how isolated she was from society for a thousand years on the moon, and how she's theoretically active at night. I say theoretically because I wouldn't want to assume so. Her new sleeker design, though depriving some of the fans, is no exception as well. I really love how the animators made her hair more transparent like Celestia's rainbow mane. This very well matches with her sisterhood. Her darker tones also kind of work, and it kind of hints us that she's aged a little more. Never thought that Alan Cords would age that fast but I can only guess. The inclusion of Sakura was a fun idea. Her suit was pretty badass and her storytelling methods were no exception. Nice to see her after what, two episodes and that's it? Also, her supposed magic and support of her narration just comes to show that even earth ponies can pull past their limits of just being an earth pony. Now, many viewers have complained about the absence of rarity and that she was meant to be in the script before taken out, according to what Lauren Faust said on DeviantArt. At first I didn't care, but when thinking about it now, it would have been nice to see her supposed outfit, especially considering that she's a professional fashion designer. This episode is 21 minutes long, whereas on average, it's 22. It wouldn't hurt to fit an extra minute for her, guys. The new baby pony Pipsqueak was adorable, though I don't have anything else to say about him except to spark up and give the childish feel of the episode. This brings me to the next thing I want to mention, in which no one else seems to go over. The way this episode's slanted shots, dark tones, and slapstick and goofball humor was executed, the atmosphere here was amazing, giving you that cold, spooky, yet fun feel of the Halloween charm. You could say that any cartoon could have played that holiday theme, but in my opinion, they don't pull it off as well. This episode played this theme out very well, without forcefully doing so, and it actually works for Luna's first appearances. When this episode ended, I felt very relieved and smiled. It was a long wait, but to the results in mind, it was very well worth it to all the fans of the show. Not to mention this was more lighthearted than the previous three. That's not saying anything bad, but it's nice to see the other side of the spectrum. And damn it, I wish I could go trick-or-treating now. But I'm too old for that. At least I can drink. But nevertheless, this has become one of my favorite episodes of season two, and I hope to see Luna more. But until next time, take care.